Our next question is from Liv mm -hmm. and she asks, I'm trying to get a grip on the concept of fear and love, mm -hmm. how to let go of fear. Mm -hmm. I had no fear of my own death before I became a mother. Mm -hmm. I'm now terrified of separating from him. He's nine years old. I have nightmares about him having to face this world without me and I'm terrified of having to continue life on earth without him. I'm torturing myself with stories about missing children and tragic death to try to deal with this fear, I guess. I'm sure lots of parents have these thoughts and have no idea how to deal with, deal with the fear of losing the one you love the most. How do we deal with these feelings? Uh, my dear sister Liv, um, there is self-delusion upon self-delusion in your question and it's quite sad actually in the sense that there are so many things you're telling yourself here that are completely false and I need to go through them with you. Mm -hmm. So let's go through each sta sta statement one by one, shall we? Because I, I just feel like a lot, a lot of our questions, there is just self-deception upon self-deception and then there's a question at the end. Yeah. And we need to deconstruct the self-deceptions before we even arrive at the question, at the answering the real question. And this is something that we need to do with Liv here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So would you like me to go back so through make, the question? Yeah, one, by, one, one statement by one through, statement. Yeah. Let's go through it. Okay, first. I'm trying to get a grip on the concept of fear and love. I'm s stop there. You can't get a grip on the concept of fear and love while you're in fear. <laughs> you need to feel your fear in order to get a concept of love. Mm -hmm. And also you need to feel your fear in order to understand fear. So, so there's no such thing as getting an intellectual concept on an emotion. You need to feel the emotions, then you'll understand them. So firstly, your desire to get a grip or an intellectual concept of emotion is already flawed before we begin. You need to allow yourself to experience the emotions, then you'll get a grip on the concept of them afterwards, the, the thoughts of the truth about these emotions will come to you, mm -hmm. right? So you, you're trying to put the cart before the horse here. What you're trying to do is come up with an intellectual concept about love and an intellectual concept of fear without feeling love or fear. And the reality is while you do such things, you're not going to progress and you'll also not understand fear or love. Mm -hmm. And you don't understand fear or love, which is very evident in the rest of your questions. We need to talk to you about that. Okay. The next question is how to let go of fear. Yes, yeah, so that's the question. How do I let go of fear? I've said over and over how to let go of fear. You feel it. You experience yeah. it. You allow yourself to experience it. Now, we won't talk about, you know, all the different things about that because we've talked about that in other questions. Yeah. But that's the way you do it. You're not going to be able to come up with some kind of intellectual magic pill or any other thing that will help you go through the process, you're going to have to develop your will enough to actually go through the experience of your fear. So that, that's the important thing. I had no fear of my own death before I became a mother. Completely untrue. Completely untrue. Mm -hmm. You had an extreme fear of death before you became a mother and you have no idea how much fear you're actually in with regard to the fear of death. And to be frank with you, the majority of people on this planet have no idea either mm -hmm. of how afraid they are of death. And as soon as they have a child, it comes out. As soon as they have a child, it gets triggered, bang. That's where you can see your fear of death. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and most of our fears of death are about a fear of losing a person, not losing our own life. So in other words, many of us have fears, more fears, in fact, about losing another person rather than our, our own death. Mm -hmm. But that is a fear of death still. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and we need to see it as such. I'm now terrified of separating from her nine-year-old son. Correct. She is terrified of separation and she sees death as separation. Mm -hmm. And it's not true. From God's perspective, death does not separate you from your loved ones. Every single night when you go to sleep, you actually will ex continue to experience your loved ones. So the whole concept that death creates separation is completely false. And this is one reason why you're terrified because you believe false things. Yeah. Right? You, she believes false things about death, about separation, that it's possible to be separated from someone you love. It's not possible. But I suggest to you, Liv, that you don't love your son, which we'll go through in a second. Yeah. Mm. 
I have nightmares about him having to face this world without me, mm. and I'm terrified of having to continue life on earth without him. Yes. Now, let's look at this. You are severely addicted to your son. It's very dangerous what you've done to your son, actually, to him emotionally. Whose child is he? He is not yours. He is God's child. He is God's child, not yours. You, are, you have only created his physical and spiritual bodies through the process of sexual intercourse. That's all. The soul of your child is not your child. It's God's child. So, so God created that soul. You did not create it. You don't own it. It's not, it doesn't belong to you. And God's got a far better way of caring for her, her children than you do. In fact, the way you're caring for your son here is very, very much a, da a damaging relationship. And I, and I suggest to you that you need to read through some books that might help you deal with this very damaged relationship with your son. It's driven by your terror and particularly your terror of separation and what you believe you love. And, and what's the book, uh, Mary, that book, the books relating to... Uh, emotional incest. Emotional incest. This is, these are books you need to read regarding your relationship with your son. Yeah, there's one by Dr. Patricia Love. So Dr. Patricia Love. And it's called Emotional Incest and there's a tagline that I can't remember now. Yeah, but, um, yeah. yeah. And, and you have an emotionally incestuous relationship with your son and your son, you are using your son to avoid all of your own terrors and fears. And you've set up heavy addictions with your son and these are damaging your son very badly and you need to stop mm -hmm. this from occurring. Your, your son is going to be very distressed in his later life with this projection of emotions that are coming from you. And really, if we have a pure approach to parenting, mm -hmm. we are happy for our child to continue on and face the world, as Liz, Liv puts it, Alone. on their own. In fact, we, we actually want them to. want to instill the confidence in them to do that yes. and not to be dependent upon us and not to Correct. fear separating from us and not to um, live in codependence with us as a parent. Correct. Yeah. We need to understand that whenever we set up these codependent relationships with our children, we are damaging our children very badly. Yeah. And on top of that, we are just feeding our own addictions to avoid specific pains within ourselves. So Liv, my dear sister, you are avoiding very, very large pains within yourself about separation. And you need to allow yourself to experience them. And it's separation from a male that, you've now, that, that you're now experiencing and you, you're or, resisting. or resisting the yeah. experience of. And you've now set up an emotionally incestuous relationship with your son in order to avoid the experience of these particular emotions. And this is damaging to yourself and your son. And, and, and honestly, you need to address this. It's a very serious problem mm -hmm. and you need to address it. And also I feel that Liv is putting a lot of emphasis on death when really she's just afraid of not having uh, this. Well, the next line I think is, needs to be read probably sure. and then we'll discuss sure. the whole thing. I'm torturing myself with stories about missing children and tragic death mm -hmm. to try to deal with this fear, I guess. No, she's not dealing with the fear. She's living in it. Mm -hmm. She's torturing herself with stories about missing children because she doesn't want to go through separation, right? And she yeah. keeps attracting stories about separation. Yeah. She doesn't want to go through separation. She's living in it. She's not, she's not actually feeling her terror about it because the terror's got nothing to do with that, actually. Mm -hmm. It's got nothing to do with separation. It's got other things, uh, much more difficult emotions to feel than, than, than that. So let's yeah. read the next statement because that's really yeah. a fair part of the discussion. Uh, I'm sure a lot of parents have these thoughts and have no idea how to deal with the fear of losing the one you love the most. Well, now this is where we have a lot of trouble and a lot of false beliefs. Now, firstly, yes, a lot of parents do have these problems. In fact, many men have this problem with their daughters and many women have this problem with their sons. They have used their sons and daughters as surrogate relationships in order to prevent the pain from other types of relationships, usually with their opposite gender parent and then with their, with their with partner, their right? So they're using these relationships to avoid a lot of pain in those two sorts of relationships. But, but there's a second half to it, and I can't quite remember what uh, she said. Um, uh, oh, parents have she's the, worried about losing the person she loves, loves the, most. the most. This is a big, big problem with your current definition of love. Mm -hmm. you, love you say you love your child the most in the world. Honestly, you don't. 
you are dumping huge amounts of very negative emotions on your child that are incestuous in nature and you're harming your child quite a lot and you don't see it. So you're not loving your son at all at this moment. You believe you are, but you are not. Secondly, there is a problem with loving your children the most. Mm -hmm. And most people on this planet have no idea what the problem is. God designed you first to love the other half of yourself and yourself. So in other words, God designed you to love your soulmate first, not your child first. And in fact, in the future, your child will meet his soulmate and whoever that is, male or female, he will love him or her the most. That's the way God designed it. That's the way it. God designed yeah. it. When you say you love your child the most, you are in complete denial. And this is the main reason why you set up this uh, emotionally incestuous situation with your son. You are in complete denial of the opposite gender, in your case, your opposite gender soulmate attraction, mm -hmm. which is your soulmate. A male, obviously, because otherwise you would have set up this addiction with a female child. Mm -hmm. The reality is your attraction is to the real attraction that needs to be developed is towards the other half of yourself who is a male. And what you need to do is start working your way through why you avoid relationships with adult males and why you have in, instead engaged most of your uh, emotional issues with a child who is a male. And that is the main reason why you have taken this approach with your son. You are, in the, you are in the process of psychologically damaging your son for any future relationship. And, and this is going to cause him a lot of trouble in his future and particularly coming up to his teenage years because I think she said he was nine years of age. Yes. Now, within a few years, he's going to start entering puberty if he hasn't already. And, and as a result, he will, he will start going through emotions that he'll find very confusing in his relationship with you because of this emotionally incestuous relationship that you've begun with him and established over many years now. You need to work through these terrors and fears that you have. And you are using this emotionally incestuous relationship with your son in order to avoid them. And, and it's very, very damaging to yourself and him. Yeah. And uh, the final part of was how do, how do we deal with these feelings? And you've, you've pretty much uh, stated what she's been that. focusing on is the fear. Yeah. And that's not her problem. No. Her problem is her addictions. She's her, actually in a state of addiction. She's with in her a state son. of total addiction yeah. with her son. Yeah. Her son is meeting all of her addictions. Yeah. And, and, and it doesn't make the fear go away because the only way to make the fear go away is to actually feel it. Yeah. So what she's doing is because she's got such intense fear associated with death and associated with separation, and particular associated with separation from a male, yeah. she's now projecting all of those intense emotions onto her son. He's now having to fulfil a role, and in the process of fulfilling this role, it's becoming destructive to his psychological and emotional development. This is very, very damaging for her to, yeah. to continue to engage, but she's justified the engagement saying she loves her son. Yes. And this is a total, like, it's totally incorrect. You are not loving your son, is it, Liv? Yes, Not Liv. loving your son, Liv, while you do these things to your son. You are actually causing him a huge amount of emotional burden, which, which is not love, but rather just living in your own codependent addictions with him. Codependent addictions are not love, mm. and you need to learn that because you haven't learned that in your relationship with your son. You do not love him. You are in codependent addiction with him. And later he's going to come to t have to come to terms with that. And I feel very sad for him having to come to terms with those emotions, given that you're projecting it, them so intensely at him because he's going to have some very strong feelings to have to go through as a result. My suggestion is own your fear about separation from a male own your feelings about having an adult relationship. You do not want to have an adult relationship with a male. You do not want to open your heart to a male. You do not want to have an adult relationship with an open-hearted man and you do not want to be open-hearted to the man. Mm -hmm. And these are the emotions you are avoiding that are causing all of these problems. Now, sure, you have some fears about them, but you need to feel them because otherwise this addiction with your son will continue. Yeah. Now... There's obviously a lot more I could say in answer to the question, but my suggestion to you, Liv, is to read the book that we just suggested to you, the Emotional Incest book, and it will help you perhaps 
if you're open to reading it. And what we've found is that most people who are involved in emotional incest with their children have no desire to read that book at all and, in fact, feel quite offended that, that, that we've suggested to them to read the book. And my suggestion to you is you need to read it for your own sake and also for the sake of your son. You need to work your way through why you've projected so much emotion at him and so many of your fears at him and why you're in this deep level of fear is a lot to do with your relationship with men rather than death and, and more to do with the feeling of what, how you're going to survive, how you're going to live without your son. Right? So as soon as your son ever approaches another woman in order to have a relationship or a man, depending on what his you know, soulmate attraction is, um, you are going to be instantly enraged. You want him to have the relationship with you and that is what is damaging. You are avoiding a relationship with a, ma a grown male and you are using your son's relationship, your relationship with your son to avoid this. And that's where your fears are. That's the fears you need to feel. Mm -hmm. You need to focus on those fears. And you're actually terrified of separation for, for, um, because, because your son meets all of your addictions. Yeah. That's why you're terrified of separation. Once you start dealing with some of these addictions that you have with him, you won't be terrified of separation. In fact, you'll get to the point where you enjoy the separation from your son because he's going out to live his own life. He, engage, he finishes up meeting his own soulmate, engaging his own life, and all you feel for him is joy that he's doing such a thing, living his life like he should be doing. You are attempting to live your life through him, and that is a very, very damaging thing to do to a child. Mm -hmm. So these are my suggestions to you. And I know I've been firm about it. I'm not judging you, Liv. For, for the choices that you've made because I understand the fears that generate this kind of behaviour. But you need to understand the seriousness of the situation and the damage that you're doing to your own soul and to your son's soul in, in, in taking these actions with your son. So the question, the, the question you originally asked me was how do you deal with your fear of death? It's not the fear of death that you've got a problem with, right, really. It's, it's your fear of having none of your addictions met from a man. Mm -hmm. And when your son leaves you, which he will do sooner or later, whether he dies or not, you will need to go through all those fears anyway. So my suggestion is start doing it now. You, you've got a very unhealthy relationship with your son and you need to work your way through the emotional reasons why that is the case. I think that's answered that yeah. question. <laughs>